So welcome once more to the November 2023 Four Ways to Turn Something video. In this video, we're turning an ornament. So please subscribe to all of us and enjoy. Thank you very much. Now, this is another Four Ways to Turn Something project. We're turning an ornament. And please subscribe to all of us. Richard Raffin, Tomislav Tomeshik, and Mike Peace. Okay, watch all our videos. It really helps us if you subscribe, like our videos, leave a comment. So, let's move on. Well, greetings once again. It is November 1st and it's time for another Four Ways to Turn Something. And that something this month is an ornament. Mike Peace came up with this idea and uh, here we go. I'm going to show you my approach to turning an ornament. And I'm picking maybe a classic form in my mind. Uh, what you're looking at right now is an ornament with a box elder uh, globe that's been uh, dyed. And the finial and the top part of that ornament is holly. And I really, really like this. Well, I'm down to a couple ornaments here. Let me show you the kind of ornament that I'm going to turn in this video. Okay, now what you're looking at now is an ornament I made with a sea urchin. And I'm going to show you all that in this video. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. So the finial and the top part of the ornament here is Bobinga. All right. And that's a sea urchin. Okay, now I had to back the camera off so you could see this lower part of my uh, setup here. This is a hand-turned base for my finial, and I'll show you how I did that. You can find these sorts of uh, hangers online. I find them a little clunky. They work really well, and whenever I sell an ornament, I, I usually send those along. Um, Anyway, if I really have a very special ornament, I'm going to hand make the base of that. So let's uh, readjust here and let me show you what I'm going to do in this video. And I'll show you some of my, my sea urchins and how you set that up. Okay, I got a lot of stuff spread out here on my workbench. Let me just uh, kind of show you where I'm going with this thing. Um, one of the the things I'm going to do, I'm going to turn a base and I found a nice piece of uh, box elder and I may color that. What I use when I make one of these handmade bases is I've got some uh, little items from Hobby Lobby and these are actually um, a neck ring. Okay, and I can bend those into shape and hang my ornament from that. I'll show you a little bit of that during the, the video. I've got a number of um, partially turned globes. Actually, there's a whole bunch of them there. I like this one here. This is live oak. And that'll be a really pretty little, little globe for an ornament. And they're all ready to go. But I'm going to turn a sea urchin. Here's some finials that I could probably retrofit. This one's not too bad. The other ones are kind of practice out of cheap wood. Now what I do with these sea urchins, and I, um, I copied this idea from Ashley Harwood, who's got an excellent DVD on uh, sea urchins, and she is just a master of doing this with some awesome finials. So you fill that with some foam and make sure it doesn't expand. Some of this uh, Oh, it's for windows and doors and ceiling. Make sure that's in the camera there. You can get the stuff that expands too much and that may be a problem. I've got a number of these all filled up and that helps strengthen them. Okay, I've got some little tiny ones here, which I'm not sure if I've ever done one that small. This one here, give you an idea, this is a full three inches across, okay? 
I don't want to turn anything quite that big. I've got one I, I picked out. It's got foam on the inside and I've got magic marker around the rim of this. So what you have to do is, uh, it's got these little bumpy things on there. That's a technical term, bumpy, bumpy things. And I'm going to take a sander and I'll show you how I do that. And you have to kind of clean this up a little bit. These are not by any means perfectly round. Okay, here's a good example. You see how uneven that rim is right there. You have to do something and make that round. So I think maybe the first thing I'll do is go over on my lathe here and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I have a very simple device here for cleaning up this area, making that round. I've got a little piece of maple with a cone turned on it. I got some sandpaper uh, glued on there with CA glue. And I'll turn my lathe on here in just a second. I've got, I've got the openings marked with some magic marker just to show you where I'm trying to round, round over here. Don't need to be going very fast, so we'll turn that down just a little bit. And you have to try to hold this as square on as you can. So I'm kind of looking down the, the side of this thing. And that is pretty much all it takes. The other thing I've got to do is I've got to go over this area right here and make a little shoulder, okay, for lack of a better term. And I need to just sand that down and I can do that with a file or some sandpaper. Um, I need to do the other end of this and what I'm going to use, I've got a little cone that I'll put into some pin jaws or something and work on the other end. I just don't have one small enough to get into that opening. Let me just get set up here. Okay, I've got this little uh, cone set up in some pin jaws. I just take a second and uh, true up the inside of the small opening for this. All right, now that's really, really critical. That's really important that you do that because when you turn the, the finial and the top part of your, your project, that's going to be round and it's got to sit in there. And I'll show you um, a rather unique way of connecting the top and the bottom. Because most of this video is going to be on turning the finial. There, and that actually worked pretty good. I just thought maybe I could just take those little pointy things down with this uh, this cone here. You've got to eliminate those or else it just isn't going to work very well. Not too bad. And I think that'll do it right there. Turn my dust collector on too. Now, I didn't tell you the best part of this. What I'm going to do with my, my sea urchin is I'm going to do some gilding on this. I've got some uh, 24 karat real gold leaf and I'm going to cover that with, uh, with some of that. And you've already seen what it looks like natural on natural. So let's go on and turn the, the finial and the top part of this. 
And then the last thing I'll do, I'm going to find my piece, the last thing I'll do is apply some gold leaf to this. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Alright, now I've decided to um, use a nice piece of cherry for my finial. Okay, this is uh, much more length than I really need. I'm going to mark this here. I'm, I'm going from another one of my ornaments, okay? Um, just put a mark right here. This will be the main finial, the lower finial. This will be on the top of the ornament. So the first thing I need to do is establish basically a tenon right here that'll go into this uh, part of my sea urchin. I've got that marked on my calipers. Alright, now I can leave this little bit on there. It's not going to hurt anything. So I've gone down to uh, the approximate diameter that I need. And this is a good way to do this. I've only gone down a couple millimeters to establish that little area. I'm going to find my, my sea urchin, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just right there, okay? I'm going to take that down just, just a little bit more. Getting a little vibration on that, but uh, that's all right. So I think that's that's perfect. Now I can also see that I need to take down some of these little bumpy areas right in here, so that fits a little better against that. Now, eventually, I'm going to reverse chuck this. Okay, so I'm bringing my my tail center back up. All right, I'm going to take a narrow parting tool and just take off this little bit of wood here. I really don't need that on there. I'm going to make this uh, tenon a little bit longer. I'm using a bedan as a peeler. I'm going to check that opening once more on my urchin. See urchin. Okay, still just a little bit of tight there. All right. I think that'll work just fine right there. The next step in my operation here, I need to drill a hole right here for an eighth inch dowel. And that's going to connect the bottom finial through the uh, sea urchin to the top. I'll show you all that later on. So I've got a, a little, uh, oh, I think they call this a, a jeweler's vise or, or something like that. And it's got an eighth inch 
drill bit in there. So I'll turn my lathe on and drill a hole and, and really all I want to do is go up to about right here. Okay, I don't need to go um, really very far in that because I don't want um, that dowel to interfere with the detail on my finial. Turn my speed down just a little bit. Kind of get an approximate length on this. A little bit more. And that'll be fine. So just make sure my dowel fits in there. Okay. And I'll glue that in later on when I put my ornament together. Now, this is going to be uh, put into the pin jaw. This is going to be put into my pin jaws. Okay, so I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to part this off right up here. And I'm going to check my, my length here. I, that's plenty long. And I, I'm sure I won't have a finial quite that long. So I'm going to prepare this. This is the top finial and I'm going to pre prepare that just a little bit so I'm ready to go when I'm turning my finials. Now I've moved my little, uh, my top finial blank out a little bit from the, the chuck jaws. This should be fine. I'm not going to do any real heavy cutting on this, but I need to drill um, a hole in here. This is the bottom. This is going to go against the sea urchin. So I need to drill a hole for that uh, dowel. And all I need is about uh, that much, maybe three eighths of an inch. There. The other thing I need to do, let me, let me show you this, what I have. This is a drill chuck with a double-ended collets on it. This is my eighth inch uh, drill bit right there that I just did for my, my dowel rod. That fits up into there and that's a nice fit. <clears throat> but I also need to drill all the way through this with this narrow, this is a sixteenth of an inch drill bit, and I'm going to put my wire through there to hang this ornament on the top side. So I think if I go all the way down to the bottom, I'll have enough uh, distance on that. So, and I should have a place to start that, and I do. Okay, now. I'm going to put the longer blank in there and turn the bottom finial first. Now the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to mark this length on this. I think I've got way, way too much um, length on my finial. Mark this and then we'll, we'll take that down to round and I'll show you some of the tools I'm going to use.
Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this down to basically a long cylinder with a spindle roughing gouge, and I probably won't go back to that tool. But I'm going to start at the, at the top of my finial, or I guess that would be the bottom. This is the underside of my sea urchin right here, and I'm going to start here and work my way back and uh, establish some fine detail on the very end of this to begin with. Okay, now I'm going back and forth on my tools. I found a, a little spindle gouge and I'm going to work on the very end of my, my finial blank and I'm probably going to part this off and lose the tailstock because I, I need to get in there without that in the way. There we are. So I'm going to start putting some detail into this this finial. Okay, now eventually I can take some sandpaper and use that as a shaping tool. This is cherry and it's a little bit soft. Next tool I'm going to use is a vortex tool to put some really nice fine detail in this uh, area right here. Now I'm also using this little spindle gouge as a scraping tool and I can come back with that wing and just take a little bit more wood off, do a little bit more profiling. Come back to my vortex tool. Okay, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't want to get too fancy down there. Go ahead. Just around. Get a little bit more speed going here. Okay, I've worked my finial back a ways, and it's time to do a little bit of sanding on this. I've got some 320 grit, 
and I'm going to just do a little bit of shaping here. It's still not quite where I want it to be. And also on, on the very point there, it's running uh, fairly true. So I'm just taking that little bit of sandpaper and wrapping it around my finger. Holding the rest of that finial with my left hand. And I plan on coming back to this later on with some finer sandpaper. I just want to get in that little area. And I'm going to just uh, fold this sandpaper in half. Just wrap that around my finial and, and just uh, take away the high points on that and some of the tool marks. I'll come back with some, some finer sandpaper when I get that whole area done. There, that's much better. A lot of people think that you can't use a bowl gouge on spindle work. Well, here's a little 3 8 inch gouge, and I'm, I'm really taking a lot of wood off, but I'm doing it fairly safe. And I'm just kind of coming back with a pull cut. And I can even do a push cut. And I'm going in the wrong direction. Going into end grain there. I'm going to do a little scraping on this. And I'm way, way too thick right here in diameter. So I'm going to take a lot of that off. Okay, it's time for me to work on this area right up in here and the detail I'm going to use is typically called an onion. I can get that in there. This area right in here, blending into the long part of my, my finial. And I'll probably just do something simple like this little cove right there. I can back it up with my hand. I'm going to work on that right now. And again, you can see this is way too thick in diameter right here. I'm going to go back to my vortex tool 
finish this area up right in here. I think this detail right here is too big in diameter. So I'm going to take it down a little bit right here. Now let me show you the tool I'm using here. This is a Vortex tool. This is popularized by Stuart Batty. And it's a real shallow spindle gouge. But I've just ground the top flat. It's really a scraping tool, but I'm using it for some nice fine detail. And the angle here is probably uh, 25 degrees, maybe less than that. And you really can get in there and do some nice fine detail work. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on this area and make a little cove in there. I like that detail. Now I'm going back once again to my my spindle gouge. This is just a little detail gouge. I can get in here and, and fine-tune this code. Alright, now resist the temptation to take a scraping tool and work on this little area down here with this cove. Um, just practice and you can get it in there with a cutting tool and do a great job. I've got a little fillet right here as a detail. Now all I have to do is do some sanding and this will be completed. Now do that off camera. Okay, now this is fairly light wood and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dye it, color it with some uh, leather dye. This is medium brown leather dye and I tried it on a little, little scrap piece of cherry so I'm going to get a little on here. I just think this will be a better contrast to the gold leaf. And you may hear my wife back there in the background doing a little turning. And yes, I should be wearing rubber gloves. I'm going to get this all over my hand, but oh well. Okay, I've got the top finial completed. And you can see it a little better with that paper towel behind there. So that'll go on the top of my uh, sea urchin ornament. And here is the bottom finial completed. I need to figure out uh, some sort of a finish for these. But I want that uh, dye to dry completely on there. Then we're on to the gold leafing. 
and then finally the assembly of my ornament. All right, now I've given my sea urchin ornament about four coats of this. This is a, a oil-based size, and that just means it's kind of a glue. Brush that on, and it's kind of like a contact cement. You want to have that just a little bit tacky. So let me get my my gold leaf, and we'll. <laughs> Put some gold leaf on this. All right, I've got my, my gold leaf here. This is little tiny sheets of real gold leaf. I've got a brush that'll help me apply that. And when you do this, you don't want a lot of uh, wind in your shop. So be careful. All right, so the idea of the brush is to just kind of latch on to that and then apply it. Yeah, that was pretty successful. Time out. Now another tool that's pretty important to have is just a really, really nice soft um, brush that you can dab that into the crevices with. Yeah, oh, that's going to be cool. Okay, let me get another, another piece of uh, my gold leaf, and this is going to take a while, and I may not show it all to you. This is when you find out you're, you have some big clunky fingers. And the best thing you can do is have your gold leaf sort of overlapping. Uh, oh yeah, I like it. <sighs> All right, I'm going to continue and I may not show you every, every bit of this because this is going to take a while. I didn't mean for this to be a gold leafing video. Okay, I've got my gold leaf all completed right there. And I'm going to assemble this. So I have the top, I have a little dowel glued in the underside of the top finial right there. I've got a little, little bit of wire as a hanger right there. And um, you can get this kind of wire maybe at Hobby Lobby or something. It's real, real thin wire. So I'm not going to glue anything other than this dowel. I'm not going to put glue in the top of that or the bottom of that. So I've got this measured. It fits in there. Right there. So all I got to do is put a little glue in the underside here. I got a Q-tip. This is one of those things that uh, I find indispensable in my shop is Q-tips. Okay. That's it. No, no glue around the outside of that. So I'm just going to find that hole in there, right there. There we, there we have it. So the, the final thing I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to take this block of wood and I'm going to turn a base for this. And I will show you the finished ornament. All right, I found a nice piece of mesquite for the base of my ornament hanger. I'm just putting some final touches on this. This is the diameter of the wire that I'm going to be using. So 
I got my hole drilled that deep and um, yeah it's pretty much all done except for taking some pictures of my my ornament and the stand I gotta get this in the grooves there grooving all right let's take this over on the workbench and put this together okay now one last thing here I've got this uh, attached with double stick tape onto a waste block okay there we go